Thank you for, for having Dance Life in your offices today. Pleasure. Um, congratulations on Wicked. I went down to the musical and we interviewed Lucy. Phenomenal show. Was it a difficult decision for you when thinking about the next show to bring to Australia? Was Wicked an easy choice or was it difficult? And why do you think Australians have connected so well with the story and the cast? Well, I think, uh, look, it certainly wasn't a hard decision, but what was hard was convincing the Americans to not necessarily come down. They always wanted to come down and do it here in Australia. Sure. Um, but I had to convince them that I was the right person to co-produce it with them in Australia. And I saw the show when it, uh, I think in its first three months of opening five years ago in New York and absolutely fell in love with it. But at the same time, I was very aware that it would be hard to cast and that it would be extremely expensive. Yeah. Um, and that's always a challenge for me. And I connected with the show immediately. I just adored it and saw it several times. And... Uh, eventually what the Americans decided to do was to, um, which I'm so pleased and grateful for, that they, instead of coming down and doing it themselves, which they were going to do, they decided to take a partner who lives here and knows the landscape yep. and knows the local talent and that. And they did that and we, we made a deal. And so it's a, it's a co-production with um, myself and David Stone and Mark Platt and Universal Pictures. Yep and we co-financed it together. Uh, they have the majority share, uh, which is fine with me. Um, yeah. And um, it's just worked beautifully. And of course, with the ANZ Bank coming on board Definitely. as our major sponsor, um, it's been good. But uh, w the next question asking me, did I know if, or how did I sort of know about with Australians so going connect to work with it. Here, yeah. yeah, I didn't know. I don't. Any show I do, I, I you, you try to um, believe that the Australians will connect with it. And there's a lesson that I've learnt many times over uh, with shows that I may personally think, "Oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever seen. I've got to do it in Australia. They'll love it. I love it. I love it. I love it." Yep. which is not necessarily what the general public want. What I like is not necessarily what the public want. So when you you fall in love with a project like Wicked, you have to stand back and you've got to be objective and you've got to say, okay, business-wise, does it stack up financially? Tick the box. Will the audience go for it? Well, yes, they will, but we won't really know until we're probably two or three months into the season. Yeah. Um, will the press like it? It's a title that was not on everybody's lips when it was first, you know, when it was first announced in Australia. Mm -hmm. It was certainly on all the lips of people in the industry. Industry that we knew all, about that. Yeah, they knew, knew about, about the show. It yes. saw it, but certainly not on the public, the general public. So we had to educate them. So you, that's always a hard thing to do. I've done several shows. Well, you know, I've done heaps of shows. Yeah. God, I can't even list them. But, but several of those shows I've done that have you have rehearsed them <coughs> you have cast them correctly in your own mind you have marketed as well as you can you have spent a pot of money on it the opening night is the best opening night the opening night party is fantastic everything is going for it and everybody's coming up to you saying all the right things yeah and then on Monday morning when the ads have gone in that weekend you sell three and a half tickets and you think, well, I don't believe this. What's what? Why? And you don't know why the public say no to it, and that has happened to me, and I know it's happened to other producers, sure. um, where the public just say, no, we don't want no. it. It might be great, and and the click audience might love it, yeah. But at the end of the day, the general public don't want to see it, and I don't know what that answer is. How you actually find out which shows that is? It's sort of it's hard. Yeah, definitely. My next question, you mentioned about casting then quite a bit, is how, how difficult is it to cast shows and to know that, that that person that you've seen maybe over a few months in, you know, three, four, five auditions mm. is going to be able to 
to hold that part well and, and pull and pull through for you, you know, through the through the season? Well, uh, it, it's hard because, and again, I, I'm not a director, and it's always the director and the creative team that cast a show. Yeah, and I have a say in that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I can point them into a direction that I want to go, um, and if, and sometimes they say no, we're not going to go in that direction. Okay. You're wrong. Yeah. Or you you can sort of manoeuvre it. You got to, It's a, it's like a negotiation in a way. You can say I want Joe Bloggs because Joe Bloggs is on television, and I believe Joe Bloggs can sing the role and act the role. Yeah. Um, and they can trust you, and they'll go with it, and hopefully. I'm right, and it all works out. I'll give you a perfect yeah. example. Sure. When many years ago I did a show called Big River, which starred Cameron Daddo, mm -hmm. and the director, um, God, this is going back to the late 80s, and the director had, we had two boys that could have played the role of Huckleberry Finn. One was Cameron Daddo, who I wanted, which would make things easier for me because Cameron was a big star on television then. Yeah. He would help. Uh, get the money in, in the sense of the investors. Uh, and we had another boy who could certainly do the role and was terrific, but Cameron had never appeared on stage before. And I just had a gut feeling that Cameron would be able to cut it with some, you know, working very yeah, hard sure. and all of that. And I went up to the director and he was going to cast the other boy. And I said, well, if you do that, we may not have a show because I can't raise the money or whatever. And so he caved in and he went with Cameron Daddo. Yeah. The opening night he came up to me, put his arms around me and he said, you were right. Cameron brings so much jump. So my intuition yeah. was right. Sure. Now, I'm not saying it is all the time, but it's sort of a negotiation between the creatives and the producers, you know. And I'm I'm a bit of a creative producer in a way where I, I do get involved and I, I have a bit of a say. Look, and when Wicked was coming up with the casting, yeah. one knew that you couldn't cast uh, personalities in the two roles of the, the witches. You couldn't cast a Delta Goodrum or people like that as much as one would have liked to. Yeah. Because those, and they would have sold tickets and it would have been terrific, but those people have never appeared on stage before. So you knew that you had to have the two girls had to be able to sing, dance and act and sustain eight shows a week. Um, so, and we're probably invariably going to be nobodies. We're going to be unknown, except they probably would have done a few sure. shows here and there and we would have known them in the industry. Yeah. But they weren't marquee names. And then the great thing about Wicked is you, you look down the casting role and there are several roles that you can cast up and you can use people that um, don't necessarily... Uh, which aren't carrying the show, the yep. role of the wizard, the role of Bok, the role of Fiero in a way. But, you know, all those characters have to certainly be able to perform, sing, perform and Definitely. do eight shows a week and that. And, you know, the great thing about, you know, using Anthony Kalir as Bok and, and Rob Mills as Fiero and Rob Guest at the time, and, you know, it was a great sort of, I'm not saying a comeback for Rob Guest, but, you know, to finish his career in a great big, Definitely. Smashing success and a great role was wonderful. And for Rob Mills, I think Rob Mills has now been taken a lot more seriously as a performer than he was before he did uh, Idol. That's right, that's yeah. right. So now he's, you know, Rob Mills, I think, has got a steady, sturdy career in the theatre. Anthony Kalia, you know, um, there were criticisms about Anthony being cast in the, in the role and that. But, you know, Anthony came on for a six-month contract. He fulfilled that. He grew as a performer through that. And I'd love to have him back for whenever the show gets to Sydney, if it gets to Sydney, for a period of time. So so having the two unknown girls who became stars yep. and have the backup of, you know, the Maggie Kirkpatricks and those sort of names and that has been perfect for, for, for me as a producer and perfect for the publicist and the audience love it now as you're aware Bert Newton has now taken over the role of the wizard yes Bert walks on that stage he gets the biggest round of applause you know because of his recognition and his standing and all of that and brings something totally different to the role of the, the wizard that, that Rob Guest did